Here you are. You've built a game engine, you've got the bones in place, your inputs are outputting, your sprites are all squishy, and now you need to embed a scripting engine. This series assumes you already have an engine or plan to build an engine around QuickJS. This is QuickJS for game developers. So here's a game loop. I've abstracted out most of the nuts and bolts for clarity, and I'm rudely assuming that you've already linked QuickJS in your build. But if we run it, we'll introduce our hero, a small brown mud monster that is patiently waiting for us to do something. Let's look at that game loop closer to see what we're dealing with. Breaking to three sections, we have the initialization, the main loop, and of course, the cleanup. In order to work with QuickJS, we'll need to hook into all three of these sections. It also has an initialization, a periodic call for dealing with async JavaScript, and a cleanup. First, we need the QuickJS header file so our compiler knows what's up. The runtime is created with JS new runtime, and this is the engine itself. The context created with JS new context is a self-contained memory space and garbage collector. In the JS world, it's called the global execution context. You can have as many contexts as you like, but one will do for now. Now we have a freshly minted runtime. We should handle the cleanup while it's still fresh in our minds. Easily done with JS free context and JS free runtime. Make sure you free any and all contexts before you free the runtime though. Lastly, we should call JS execute pending job in our game loop so QuickJS has a chance to execute any promises or await calls. The return value will let us know if it did anything and if there was an exception raised. I use this to tightly loop around the call to clear out the pending jobs before moving on. Well, what now? You initialize the JavaScript engine, but it's not much good like that. We need to actually run some JavaScript. That is done with the JS eval API call. Let's write a simple program that does some basic addition to see if the JavaScript engine is actually working. Hey, congrats. You have a really complicated calculator. Well, you've initialized the QuickJS engine, you've ran some code using eval, we're pulling the result from that eval into our C code, that leaves us the most important and perhaps the most exceptional part of this exercise, exception handling. The return value from this eval is just a JavaScript object internally. We can determine what it contains and extract both the error and the stack trace if it's available. If you ever need to debug your JavaScript and you will, handling exceptions thrown from QuickJS is critical. There is no other output. All exceptions will have an error message. This is JavaScript errors and any exceptions thrown by QuickJS internally. If the exception is from the JavaScript, then there'll be a stack trace available. JS is error will tell us. It's just a property on the exception object that contains a string. Although not strictly necessary, I'm going to move this exception handler into a function. You also need to check for and extract exceptions for a sync code. Duplicate code is the devil's playground. Now, our little muddy boy has been very patient through all this. How do we use QuickJS to manipulate entities or values in the engine? Let's clean up a bit first. We don't need all this execute on pending jobs boilerplate here, so we'll move it into a function to cut back on the visual noise. And instead of passing in a string literal to this JS eval call, use the operating system to read a text file and execute that instead. That way, we don't need to recompile the whole engine when making JS code changes. Now that's done, we need a way of controlling the sprite on screen. 
This engine exposes the X and Y position of the monster with game monster X and Y. Let's use that. We're going to use the global object in QuickJS to talk to the engine. It's not the best approach, but it's a quick and dirty way to get things started. Use JS New Float 64 to create a new JavaScript object that contains a double and initialize it with the current value in Monster X. Then add that to the global object as a property with define property value, making sure to free any JS values you create along the way. Here is a small JavaScript program we're going to use to control the monster. In the game loop, we'll execute that script. The changes we make in JavaScript exist only in its own memory space. We need to ask QuickJS to access that data we just changed. Get the property from the global object reference we created before, then tell QuickJS to copy the value from that property and into the variable that was exposed by the engine and run it to see what we get. That's it. You've now integrated QuickJS into your game engine. However, it's still early days and there are more things to explore. We'll need to get away from the global object and running an eval every frame for every entity is going to be a performance nightmare. In future episodes, We'll explore loading and using ES6 modules, compiling your JavaScript into P code for performance and obfuscation, registering callbacks from JavaScript, and many, many other things. Hit the subscribe button so you know when the next episode drops. If you enjoyed this episode, give this video a like, and please feed the algorithm and let me know in the comments how awful my code is. All hail the algorithm!